So I would suggest we start right now. And if more people are coming, then the door is open. Welcome everybody. And uh, the focus of the next session is uh, how to transform your existing above custom code in S4 HANA for the clean core. So after the system conversion from traditional ERP to S4 HANA, the next important topic is, of course, clean core. And uh, you probably want to know what you can do about your um, custom code with regard to transformation to clean core. Short look at the agenda. We will start with the custom code management inside of S4HANA system after the system conversion, how it should look like. Then we will go through the custom code transformation options for clean core from retirement of unused code uh, up to the um, application of ABAP Cloud for the custom code uh, in your landscapes. We will take a look at Cloud ATC. It's ATC on BTP, what is already possible there. And uh, finally, there is outlook at uh, generative AIs in custom code tools, what we plan there. So the actual challenge after the system conversion for the custom code is that you have a lot of legacy code which came uh, to the S4 HANA system from the traditional business fit system. And of course, we want to go to the direction of clean core and we want customers to develop cloud ready and apply above cloud as far as possible. But the question is what to do with this existing legacy code and how can we handle this coexistence of the new above cloud related developments in the legacy code because you will probably also need to some adjustment to your old DIN Pro applications or you will need to adjust some custom development which is legacy based and so on. How to handle this? And we propose to handle this uh, in S4HANA on-premise and S4HANA private cloud edition by means of so-called 3T extensibility model, which now let me ask you a question who uh, from you already have seen this picture about three tiers and accessibility model. Okay, quite significant amount of people. Um, this is related to a uh, development which uh, should take place in the following way. Tier 1 is ABAP Cloud uh, ready development, which is ideally developed following all the principles of ABAP Cloud development model directly on S4 HANA on step or side by side in the SAP BTP ABAP environment. Then in addition, you have so-called tier 2 layer, which completes the uh, tier 1 layer. And there you can develop your own custom wrappers for the functionality, which is not released by SAP yet, but probably you need it for your custom application. And tier 3, this is the uh, our problem steer, so to say, this is our classical uh, above development which came into new S4 HANA system after system conversion. And what to do about this? First, of course, the option uh, which we recommend all the customers is to retire as uh, much as possible of the code. So set back modifications to standard, get rid of unused code, take a look probably the uh, functionality is already available in S4 HANA standard and you don't need it anymore and so on. At least what you would need to do is to adapt your code after system conversion to S4 HANA simplifications and uh, Hopefully, you will have also the use cases which are, can be innovated or renovated into the direction of uh, above cloud, be it on stack or side by side. And we will take a, a look at these options in detail. Which uh, custom code management and transformation tool will, tools will help you there? Uh, this, the, uh, there are two main tools which are available there. Custom code migration app, uh, who from you already knows this tool, custom code migration app? Okay, quite uh, some people. Is based on remote ABAP test cockpit and is capable to analyze your code for S4HANA readiness for ABAP cloud and also supports classic ATC use cases. You can uh, upload the collected usage data to the custom code migration app and therefore identify unused code based on this information. You have strong analysis capabilities and the app, and the app is available in SAP BTP ABAP environment. 
You use custom code migration app for uh, analysis of custom code for different use cases and also for retirement of unused code. And the above development tools for Eclipse with quick fixes is the tool of choice for the adaptation of the code uh, for S4 HANA, for above cloud and so on. Uh, we offer semi-automated adaptation by means of so-called quick fixes, and uh, quick fixes can be also executed as mass separation at one step, and you can also write your own custom quick fixes for uh, the use cases which you need. So, uh, the first option is to retire unused and obsolete custom code. Uh, here, um, the very important recommendation for you is to collect usage data. So, if you haven't done before during system conversion, you haven't collected usage data, it's not too late to start with it after the system conversion as well. Please collect usage data directly in the ERP productive system using the ABAP call monitor and SUCG transaction. ABAP call monitor collects the usage data, SUCG transaction aggregates and the stores on the database of the system without uh, any performance overhead. This collected usage data can be uploaded to the custom code migration app and based on this information, the app can identify unused code which uh, should be subsequently deleted from the system. You can also back up, of course, unused code if you probably need it at some point of time later on. But recommendation is really get rid of unused code, turn on the uh, usage uh, data analysis and do it at least for one year plus year closing, plus year closing in order to get representative results. So the next option is to adapt custom code for S4HANA. Uh, you would need to do it anyway after S4HANA conversion. The tool of choice is about development tools for Eclipse and we offer the quick fixes for the most typical simplification use cases like missing order by in selects or usage uh, of the SAP standard tables which has cha have changed in S4HANA like conf, vbug, vbub and so, so on. And um, for this particular use cases you can expect up to 60%, I would say, automation rate for adaptation. The quick fixes are mass enabled, you can execute them at one step, and uh, this will save you the uh, manual work, work for, for adaptation. After adaptation of the custom code, we recommend uh, using SQL monitor for performance tuning, especially if you're coming from ERP, from any database to uh, SAP HANA, we recommend to optimize the performance intensive SQL found in SQL Monitor and uh, in the next step to build, rebuild them using ABAP CDS, MDP and ABAP SQL to optimize them for uh, utilization of uh, SAP HANA. So the next very important option is how to apply ABAP Cloud for custom code. First uh, a recommendation is develop with ABAP Cloud as as much as possible, so use this tier one with above cloud only development and follow the main principles of development with above cloud development model. So use only released APIs from the above platform and as for HANA solution. And the usage of released APIs will be checked by SAP, uh, above compiler if you set for your development above for cloud development language version. And uh, for not released SAP functionality, you create your custom APIs uh, you, based on SAP recommendation. Use only released extension bodies, uh, points, bodies to extend SAP objects. Of course, about RESTful application programming model, CDS, IMDPs, above SQL, and uh, above development tools for Eclipse as development environment. And for uh, the uh, quality checking of your landscapes uh, and adaptation of above cloud uh, in three tier landscape use, please, above test cockpit. How you can control the usage of um, released APIs in your code? So, if you develop in tier one, you can do it uh, by using above language version. Just switch above language version to above for cloud development, and you will get compiler errors for the code which violates above cloud development principles. So it's easy, tier one, just use above for cloud development language version. For other tiers, tier two and tier three, 
use standard ABAP as uh, ABAP language version. In there, ABAP test cockpit is the tool of choice to help you to find the issues in the custom code, which is not ABAP cloud compliant. So you can run ABAP cloud readiness checks and you will see the issues in the code. If you are missing functionality and released APIs uh, from SAP and want to enable this functionality uh, from SAP standard for tier one consumption, the recommendation is to develop your own custom wrappers. And uh, the foundation for custom wrappers are so-called classic APIs. We at SAP delivered the classic APIs list. This is the list of the stable APIs from uh, application development, as for HANA application development, and uh, this uh, list is common for all uh, releases. And we recommend if you build a custom wrapper, then uh, build them based on these classic APIs. So the objects in your code which use these uh, classic APIs can be cloud enabled. In addition, uh, this uh, usage of classic APIs can be checked by uh, ATC check. You can download it and install it via the corresponding SAP node. So, um, as you develop custom wrapper, you proceed in the following way. You develop the wrapper object in the tier two, and uh, the, during the implementation, you will access the standard SAP technology and you access it via this classic API. This is the idea behind. So you use only classic API and then you release the wrapper for use in cloud development for C1 contract for usage in tier one. And here is also the link to the guide. There is uh, the custom wrapper generator by Adre Fisher, free available as open source on GitHub. I can recommend you to use uh, this generator where you can generate custom wrappers out of function modules, for example, Bobby's. So you don't need to uh, write your wrappers manually. You can uh, benefit from using this uh, open source generator. And we also currently working on integration of a tier two wrapper generator to above development tools for Eclipse. So this will be also available there. For existing code, you can adapt uh, some uh, applications which you would think they are can be renovated into the direction of above cloud. You can adapt them for uh, SAP as, uh, for above cloud in SAP S4 HANA system. How to do this? Uh, you use above development tools for Eclipse for the analysis. You just run above cloud readiness checks over your code. And then you use uh, the quick fixes. We offer the quick fixes uh, to adapt your code to the usage of above, above for cloud development language version. And in addition, you will get in above test cockpit results in uh, above development tools for Eclipse. Also the successor information, so successor released API, which you need to use instead of uh, unreleased SAP functionality. For example, if you directly access the SAP standard table, then uh, the successor information will show you that you need to uh, use the CDS view to access the table. If you miss the API, as I already said, implement your custom wrappers, and also you can request missing released APIs at the corresponding SAP influence campaign. So now I would like to show you a short demo, how you would proceed uh, if you want to adapt your piece of code for above cloud. And here I have, for example, the class, and uh, I will run above test cockpit uh, with above cloud readiness checks. In order to see which issues I have in this uh, source code object and uh, adapt it for above cloud. So what I get here, these five arrows in this small source code, usage of API which will not be released and also syntax errors. And you see here this yellow bulb signalizes that there are quick fixes here for this kind of issues. Uh, for the usage of uh, above language, which is not compatible with above cloud, and here I can just uh, step into the code and use uh, control one shortcut and the quick fix uh, shows me the proposal to, repress, uh, to replace the refresh statement with clear statement. But as I already said, the quick fixes are mass enabled, therefore I can just mark the whole list with findings 
and use recommended quick fixes wizard to adapt the whole uh, findings at one shot. Here I have chosen also post-processing step. I would like to activate the changed object and recheck them again with ATC. If you go here to the next step in the wizard, you will see here uh, how the old source looks like. Here, for example, refresh statement is used and how the source will look like after applying the quick fix here. Clear will be used. Or, for example, here replacement uh, of the move operator through the assignment operator here. So if you agree to the quick fixes proposal, you just press finish button and the quick fixes get applied. And since we have chosen the post-processing steps, the above test cockpit uh, runs again over the source code. But we see here the uh, findings uh, are vanished and uh, the remaining finding is about usage of API that will not be released. Let's step to this one. Here we see direct access to the table boot 000 in the select and the details of analysis of this finding tells me that the, this, the usage of API that will not be released, the use direct access to the table is not possible. We need to use the CDS entity I business button. So I need to replace this select with direct access to the table with access to the CDS uh, view. Okay, I have prepared here the solution and I will just copy it over just for the demo purposes. Yeah. Just replace this select. Yeah. Business partner, okay. Save, activate, and recheck the source code. So I replace now uh, the direct access to the table with the successor CDS view, and the ATC findings list shows me okay, you have no findings. During this adaptation for ABAP Cloud, uh, you have uh, a lot of support in the ABAP development tools in Eclipse itself. For example, what you see here on the left-hand side, this is released objects tree. You can work on the Project Explorer with so-called virtual trees. You can create uh, your own customized view on the repository and see, uh, for example, here like these released objects which are available in the systems which are grouped by the application components. And here if I navigate to the material management purchase requisition, for example, into the death, to the behavior definitions you see here, uh, this uh, local uh, wrap uh, API can be used here as behavior definition. And here you have, for example, different enhancement spots, uh, bodies which you can use to extend this uh, purchase requisition solution. So the recommendation is build up your own uh, released objects tree and see which objects are released inside of the system. Besides that, uh, you can also take a look at the properties view at the API state, for example, here the table boot 00 is not released uh, in the release state contract C1. And uh, it tells me that there is successor, I business partner, I can navigate to the successor, business partner, and here the API state of this CDS view tells me, okay, uh, this uh, CDS view is released for C1 contract for usage or in the system internally. Besides that, uh, in the above search, you can also search and using different property filters, like for example, I would like to search for API, um, which is used in cloud development in this system, and I would like to display all the uh, CDS views. So I will choose here DDL as data type, and uh, after the search, I will see the list of all CDS views in the system. Um, just do it again. API. Use in cloud development and 
Type. Somehow, don't know why it doesn't work. Okay, but uh, no problem with that. Uh, as I already said, you get a lot of support in ABAP development tools in Eclipse. You can, for example, for the source, switch directly the um, language version, and you can switch it for ABAP for cloud development, and then you will get directly the syntax errors uh, in the uh, code where it doesn't comply to ABAP cloud development principles. Or, as I already showed you, you can work with released objects trees. Uh, you can search for released APIs, what uh, just uh, haven't worked right now. And you can see the API state in the properties view and see which object is released uh, for cloud development. And if it's not released, uh, which one is the successor. If you have older system as S4HANA 2022 release uh, and check your code with ATC there, you will not get successor information uh, which um, above cloud objects uh, can be used as successor because uh, the developer extensibility was first enabled with 2022 system. But if you want to understand how far you are from the uh, clean core with above cloud, for example, in older system as 2022, or ERP system even, you can use custom code migration app and the custom code migration app uh, must get so-called cloudification repository as input for the cloud readiness checks. Cloudification repository is available for each s hana release, public and private cloud and on-premise and lists all the available uh, released APIs in this particular uh, release. So you can run ATC checks with custom code migration app uh, on the usage of cloudification repository and get the preview uh, how many above cloud findings do you have in your code. For the clean core management in Esfohana landscapes and uh, better adoption of above cloud, uh, we recommend to use uh, above test cockpit as a central governance tool. We recommend to set up remote above test cockpit and connect developer systems to the central ATC systems. Run, uh, configure ATC to run uh, during development tasks and uh, also transport release and uh, block the priority one and two findings from transport tasks and transport release. We recommend to set up the ATC check variant as following. Take the ABAP cloud development default variant delivered by SAP and add the cloud readiness checks in addition. And since um, your s landscape comes from the, uh, in many cases, it's not greenfield and it comes after, uh, with s system conversion, uh, you have a lot of legacy development there and our rec initial recommendation is to work with ATC baseline. So run initially above cloud readiness checks over your legacy code and take the findings uh, reported by ATC into baseline. Yes. You can handle them if you have time and resources. <laughs> but the, the absolute priority is uh, the priority one and priority two findings. If you manage to handle them, then you are already on the good side, I would say. Nobody will have time, uh, honestly speaking, to take care of priority three findings. If you don't have a lot of custom... Hmm? Uh, the priority three findings will uh, not uh, break your upgrade stability of the code. So it's... You can fix them, as I already said, but uh, they are not so, so important. Very important is to start with the initial baseline, so that you don't get uh, always the findings in the legacy code. And after you have just put the whole findings in the legacy code into baseline, you can start with development in the three-tier model. So you develop, ideally, above cloud, 
ready. So you develop with about cloud, set the language version and so on. And uh, at some points of time, if you need a, um, to uh, develop some um, classical, to use some classical extensibility option, for example, you need to extend GUI transaction or you need to use um, unreleased body and uh, you, need, uh, you need to use function module or legacy UI technology and so on. For these cases, uh, and hopefully there will be not so many of them, we rec recommend to use exemptions. So apply for ATC exemption on different granularity level, depending on your use case. So this technical setup uh, is uh, planned as default setup, which you want to deliver for all S4 HANA private cloud edition systems. And you can uh, to apply for at the ATC exemptions, for example, if you write a custom wrapper and use unreleased uh, function module, so you would apply uh, on the level of finding for usage only of released APIs, and you can still in your development of the custom wrapper use above for cloud development language version, for example. Or if you need to uh, develop legacy UI technology, for example, Dune for application extension, then you can apply uh, for exemption for usage of Dune Pro, but you can still develop using released APIs. Or uh, you apply for exemption for usage of not released bodies, for example. ATC Exemption Browser offers you the overview of the system, how much of standard ABAP still you use, how many exemptions do you have in this area, and how far is actually your system uh, from the clean core. Okay, uh, I have talked about um, ABAP test cockpit uh, as central governance tool um, for clean core in S4 HANA landscapes, if you develop in 3 tier landscape. But actually, our recommendation is to use cloud ATC. With ATC, we are already in the cloud. Uh, there is ATC on SAP BTP, which can be used in SAP BTP ABAP environment. And uh, we extended the existing custom code migration app, so it can handle also ABAP for cloud, uh, ABAP cloud. Uh, checks and uh, also um, standard ATC use cases. In the custom code migration app, you can, for example, use security checks by a code vulnerability analyzer, and they are available there uh, without any additional license fee. So you need only to entitle BTP ABAP environment, and you get the apps like a custom code migration app for analysis, configuration app for uh, configuration of ATC and above development tools for Eclipse, um, uh, sorry, and ATC exemption app, you get them all for free. Only entitlement for BTP above environment is required. Um, so we have uh, cloud ATC, some kind of uh, combination of Fiori-based and Eclipse-based tools. You have the apps like configuration, the app for configuration of ATC, custom code migration app for analysis, exemption app for handling of exemptions and for, as we don't have SAP GUI, uh, we use above development tools for Eclipse for management of ATC checks, check variants, and using ATC during development tasks, so-called developer scenario. So it looks like this, for handling of exemptions, you would create as developer exemption in above development tools for Eclipse, and your quality expert will get this exemption in the ATC exemption app and can approve or deny it there. What's new with uh, 2405 release of BTP above environment, we support scheduling, scheduling of ATC runs on SAP BTP based on a custom code uh, migration app project. So you can schedule ATC run. You can choose the based on job scheduler on BTP. You can choose job template, uh, plan start time, recurrency, and select the run. And then the result is available in custom code migration app. So if you take a look at the picture, uh, how ATC on premise looks like and ATC on SAP BTP, so of course it's not possible to rebuild all the features which traditional SAP um, ATC, uh, SAP GUI ATC supports. But on the other side, the most important features are already available on SAP BTP ABAP environment in ATC, like uh, analysis of source code, robust exemption process, developer scenario, and so on. 
And what is missing currently is the baseline functionality, which will be delivered with the next major release of SAP BTP ABAP environment in August. So you have, of course, the uh, advantage that the ATC on SAP BTP is fully SAP managed. You get all the new features, you get the new updates, uh, maintenance is done by SAP, and the ATC on BTP will be always capable to analyze all the releases on your on-premise or private cloud landscape because uh, ATC on-premise has the restriction that you can analyze only the systems of the same or lower release and you will get rid of this uh, restriction if you use ATC on BTB. So for clean core governance, for above cloud development, we really recommend to use ATC on BTP. What we also plan in uh, custom code tools to use the support of generative AI. And uh, here, if uh, you probably have seen this picture, we have uh, use cases for UI in a BAP platform area. For example, to accelerate development tasks, to generate uh, ABAP cloud applications and pieces of code, including tests, data and classes and so on. Uh, we support uh, transformation, and this is where we come into play with custom code analysis tools, how to transform classic ABAP code to ABAP cloud. And also the third use case is empowerment. So empower the custom developers to infuse UI into development of their business application. But we focus on transformation. What we want to achieve, we want to help the customers to go into the direction of clean code with the system and uh, use generative AI capabilities for adaptation of code to above cloud. And we would like to do it by two means. Actually, the first one is the a quick, quick fix like solution. We want to uh, offer some quick adaptations for the code, like, for example, ad adapt usage of not released APIs, as I showed in the demo, access to the table through the uh, access to the CDS view. We want to, AI to do it for us. Another use case would be a so called uh, explain functionality. In many cases, before you uh, adapt existing code to above cloud, you need to understand it. It's old, it's written by one developer some years ago, and you don't know what it's all about. And uh, we want to gen AI to explain us this code. And then finally, this information, explain information can be used as prompt for uh, gen AI to generate, generate the uh, custom code adaptation proposal. So this is how it could look like. This is one example, custom code adaptation to in S4HANA to adapt to above cloud with generative AI. Here we have this uh, example usage of API, which is not, which is not released, and uh, direct access to the table, which can be replaced uh, through the CDS view. And such kind of quick fixes, I would say, uh, we plan to offer uh, supported by generated AI. Or here, for example, explain functionality, how it could like in the custom code migration app. We want to offer it in the custom code migration app and also above development tools for Eclipse. And here, the custom code migration app will uh, get some kind of explain finding, for example, button and will explain what is this problem all about, what is done in the custom code, how it can be fixed. Okay, having said that, uh, a lot of detailed information about all the topics that are presented here, besides, of course, of AI's roadmap information, are currently available in ABAP testing and analysis community. So you will find there the plenty of blogs which are dedicated to different use cases and different topics, uh, be it uh, uh, HANA migration, S4 HANA migration, or adaptation to ABAP cloud, migration to BTP ABAP environment, and and so on. So I really strongly recommend to take a look. The good thing is, this is always uh, the same tools. So you always use custom code migration app based on remote ABAP test cockpit for analysis, and for adaptation, uh, you use uh, ABAP development tools for clip. Uh, with quick fixes. Okay, uh, having said that, I'm ready for your questions. So I have one question. If I 
understood correctly the plans to engage generative uh, AI for the analysis of the legacy code, legacy solutions, would be a kind of automation of reverse engineering. Yeah, we can yes, take yes. a look at it like, like that. Yes, we have some, let's say, legacy yes, applications. Reverse no, engineering in the sense that you need to understand the mm -hmm. implemented uh, functionality, how is it, it is done, and out of this understanding, you can let AI generate the proposal for the uh, new code. Uh -huh, the proposal, not, not the documentation, like, but rather... On the one side, it is documentation of uh, is as it is situation. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, this is one step further. This is the proposal how to um, get new code generation uh, based on this information, which you, we already know, which we already received from Gen AI about this old implementation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is kind of win-win situation. We get it explained by your uh, Gen AI and then fixed. Okay. Thank you. When do we get this AI functionality? <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> uh, actually, I cannot uh, at the time being do any commitments, but uh, I hope to get some improvements for custom code analysis in the beginning of next year. So, uh, does this mean, does this uh, AI also uh, takes over the job of renaming all the structure components after replacing a database table by a CDS view? Uh, For example, when you did this uh, correction, where you replaced the database table with a CDS, exactly. you had to re mm -hmm. rename all the structure components in the further code. Yes, uh, AI should do this implementation job. This Let's see how far we will get. Welcomed feature. <laughs> So, as far as I know, there is no way to automate this at, at the moment, right? Uh, I can say that currently we have pretty good results uh, from our tests in the lab uh, with regard to this um, quick fix-like adaptation, how uh, the code looks like and adapted uh, for the new way. But for this uh, renovation scenario to rebuild the complete old application to direction with above cloud, we are currently working on it. Well, very, very short question. You mentioned this tier two uh, wrapper generator. Mm -hmm. Did I see it right that this will be available in the Eclipse standard development tools? Exactly. We are working on this. I cannot say when, but uh, for the time being, you can use the uh, generator. Unfortunately, I can't because my customers don't allow me to have uh, local objects. As far as I understand this tools from the GitHub, I always have to create a local class where I implement this, All right? or a class in the dictionary in my temporary objects. Hmm. I'm not allowed to do this. The system. <laughs> Thank you. My question is about the baselining. So imagine we are in an ECC system and we just copied it over. So we will uh, upgrade it to S4 system mm -hmm. and then we will start all the the findings and fixings. When would be the point at uh, the time where we do the baseline? At the very beginning. Uh, so you mean uh, you, you start after the system conversion to S4, you need to uh, adjust the code to S4 simplifications. And after that, uh, start with the baseline with the okay. development. Okay, thanks. Um, I have a question about the um, custom code migration app. So is it maybe already possible on the roadmap maybe to get also some kind of um, history of findings or? Good question, already requested. <laughs> <laughs> Remembered? Well. Already requested and we, we are aware about it, but I cannot tell you right now what is the status, if it's in the development backlog or not. Or maybe you're releasing uh, the CDS view uh, on the public cloud system, which was also not released. To I will ask Thomas Fiedler. <laughs> <laughs> but we are aware about it. History was requested by many customers. 
Thank you so much for the presentation. A question regarding the previously when we used, for example, Greenfield uh, migration, we have used S4HANA readiness check and the HANA release for uh, check variant. It means that currently we have to focus on the ABAP cloud and S4HANA readiness check is already included over there. Yes, you are, you are in a good position if you really start Greenfield. And what I mean with really start Greenfield, it means that you really don't have uh, custom codes there. This is not so that you say, okay, this uh, some thousands of objects I still need, I put it there to my Greenfield system. In this case, your system is not Greenfield anymore. But if it's really Greenfield system, then just start with set up uh, your um, application component, for example, for development, set the language version to above for cloud development and start uh, your developing. And you will get all the errors reported by the syntax uh, check. You don't uh, even need uh, above test cockpit. May you please go to slide 20? So um, it means so I'm going with a classical approach. I have my sandbox. In a sandbox, I'm configuring the ATC custom code migration app. And with the remote checks, I'm checking that. But do I need additional connection to the Git so that, yeah, exactly. So yeah. do I need an additional connection to the Git so that I have this cloud repository or not? Uh, so the use cases you, you want to check your... I, I just want to check. So I want to use this um, cloud readiness check. So do I need anything additional to the custom code migration app and ATC and if I have an old uh, SEC release? like? So you want to check old SEC release? Yes. Uh, okay, then you set up custom code migration app and um, you set up it in BTP ABAP environment. And you need to provide the app with the check variant for ABAP cloud readiness. Uh, the details are described on the blog, which you see here, the link. Um, you need to provide this check variant with a link to the respective cloudification repository for which release you want to check, for example, 2023. And this would be the link uh, from BTP ABAP environment system uh, to the GitHub repository. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So you mentioned about the wrapper uh, that we generate for the BAPIs. So let's say uh, in my current customer project, we have created a lot, lot of uh, wrappers, but somehow uh, we don't uh, uh, get a notification when there is a released uh, class for the wrapper. So is there any tool that we can check all the tier two extensions? They that... want to check if in between the released yeah. API is already available by SAP. There is there is uh, no tool support for this. Okay, thank you. Unfortunately. Maybe one additional question. Um, is there any plan um, also with GCTS to make maybe the, or to improve the exemption process? To make it a little bit more review-like, where you can then maybe give a comment and push it back or so, or that only agree or decline? Uh, currently not. For exemption process, we offer this um, ATC exemption app uh, on BTP. Of course, if there is a need, the app can be extended. You can approve, you can deny exemption, you can uh, delete exemption. You will get all the functionalities which you have uh, in uh, traditional SAP GUI ATC. I was more thinking like uh, you're getting an exemption and you're thinking, okay, uh, maybe you should do it a little bit different. Uh, now you are calling your mate by Teams and uh, explain him maybe another solution uh, compared to the exemption and how a typical open source deliver product development would go. No, there are currently okay. no plans in the direction. Okay, so if you don't have any further questions, then thank you very, very much for your attention. And still, if you...
still, if you get the questions later on, just uh, drop me an email uh, and uh, we, we can also discuss, we can have a call as, as you wish. Thank you very much.